Today I'm going to show you guys how to play with light in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we got a really cool episode. We're building on yesterday's episode where you took behind the scenes showing you guys the lighting setup and everything that was important in creating the shot of Glenn, also known as DJ Dolo, sitting at a piano. Today we're doing everything in Photoshop. So if you missed yesterday's episode, we're going to link to it right down below. Be sure to check it out. It's everything to do with photography. Now today we're going to be playing with light. I'm going to go show over... We're just going to do that one more time. <laughs> I'm going to go over showing you guys how to like bring in an extra light source. And sometimes those are the things that you'll need to do when you're actually shooting is to shoot for a couple different exposures so you can bring them back in together in Photoshop. And we're going to be showing you guys some great things to do with playing with light and working with color as well. Let's get into it. All right, so here's our image of DJ Dolo. It's really cool. It's just a little bit dark. Our subject is decently well exposed. I wanted it to be kind of on the dark side, um, but there are some things that we could do to make it just a little bit better. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is oftentimes if your subject is properly exposed, there might be a light that's going to be blown out or something like that. So in this case, we, we have basically that same principle here. Our subject is well exposed enough. They're just a little bit under, but you know, uh, pretty decent anyway. Um, when working on a laptop, by the way, the color tends to be a little bit off. On a, on a full brightness, like my 27-inch iMac, it's quite a bit brighter, and uh, so the image looks less underexposed on that. So that's something to keep in mind as well. It, it can affect what the image actually looks like. Um, and we do have a, an area of the light that's actually blown out here. So our subject is exposed okay, uh, but this area here with this light is, is blown out quite a bit. So that's something that we need to actually do. So during the photo shoot, I was looking at the back of the LCD, and checking and seeing, okay, this light is going to be overexposed. So what I made sure to do is took an exposure that's using a faster shutter speed, and what that's going to do is make that light source a little bit darker. And so we're going to be bringing that in. Now, if you didn't do that during the actual photo shoot, you could go back and re-photograph a lamp that was on or something like that. Um, we've got like ceiling lamps that would probably work. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's a really great way just to make sure that you do, in fact, get that information. So that's what this is. This layer here is basically the light. Now you can see it's not at the exact same, um, it's not at the exact same angle, everything like that, but that's not really that important. We have information for the light. We can go ahead and start stretching this around and uh, moving it into place. So this was taken, it was like I was slightly, you know, to the left of the lamp, which is why it's a little bit thinner, but we can always warp it, warp it up. So I'm going to use my marquee tool and uh, we're just going to create a selection right around this area here. There we go, let's select that out. And then I'm gonna inverse this selection, Shift Command I, it's gonna inverse and I'm gonna hit de the delete key and then deselect by hitting Command D. So basically we've got just this area here now on our image and um, what I wanna do is try to get it to basically line up with this other, um, with this other light. So I'm gonna stretch it around. We're gonna bring our transform, or sorry, our opacity down just a little bit so I can see what we're doing here. And then I'm gonna hit Command T right and then just kinda like rotate right around there. And then I'm gonna hit Enter again. Now. The reason I'm going to do this is because I want this to stretch out in this direction. I want it to get wider in that direction, but my transform controls are not really going to do that for me um, because it's just it's at, rotated. I want to make it like taller, but we can't do that on the rotation. So one good way to do it is to hit, um, go te go ahead and rotate around to where you can actually work on one axis. So Command T, rotate that around, and then hit Enter. Now when I hit Command T again, it's going to do the entire layer. And then I can go ahead and like widen that up a little bit. So you can see it's just instead of trying to work off a diagonal, I can actually like work on the width and the height of it. And then I can just rotate that back into place. So it makes it a lot easier. Just do that transformation first, and then it's going to be a whole lot easier to actually get that in the right place. There we go. And if I needed to, you know, make it wider or less wide, I could do that really, really easily now. So do that first transformation. Um, it's going to make the rest of the job just a little bit easier. There we go. And let's hit enter. Now what we're going to do is bring our opacity back up to 100%. Okay. I'm going to use a layer mask on this. Let's zoom in here. And we're just going to put hit command I on the layer mask and then I'm going to paint white right over this light. There we go. It's just we've got the exposure. So now what we've got is basically like a properly exposed lamp. It's a little bit um, it's a little bit underexposed. I think for this image it should be just a little bit brighter, so we're going to work on that. I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. Option Command G is going to clip that so it only affects this little lamp and then just bring our brightness up a little bit. There we go. So we've brightened it up a little bit and shift click and Command G. So we've got a couple 
great things going on now. Um, we don't have an overexposed light, but we also have more color. And this is the actual color, like this, this was the actual light. I'm not like making this up or, you know, like drawing it from a different light source. So this color should in fact measure the, or match the color that's being reflected off of our subject's skin. So that being said, it gives us a couple things we can work with. Not only is it properly exposed, but now I can actually work with that color quite a bit more. So let's go ahead and start working on that. Now I'm gonna just bring this brightness up of the image just a, a bit, you know, using our levels because it's just a little bit dark, especially on this screen. So I'm gonna grab my levels and we're just gonna kind of brighten that up a little bit. There we go, that's looking quite a bit better. Let's go to our blue channel. I'll put some blues in my shadows and some yellows into our highlights. We are gonna be doing some color toning um, a little bit more towards the end of the image, but I do wanna go ahead and get like a baseline color tone in there. All right, so just kind of like lightening it up and changing the mood just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna lower the opacity of that. There we go. Cool, so what I wanna do now is kind of work with some of our colors that we have here um, coming from our light source. So what I'm gonna do now, let's grab another levels adjustment layer. Now this is basically just gonna be coming from my light source. I'm gonna pull up my RGB, or if you don't wanna do that, you can do that by each individual color channel. Pull up our reds, and I'm pulling up our output levels here, which means that this is basically gonna change our, what our black point looks like. So this area is basically supposed to be for this light. This is gonna be the light that's like shining through. Now what I wanna do is grab my lasso tool, and I'm just gonna do a very rough job at like making a, an area that this light might actually hit. So maybe this light does that. You can see it on his face, things like that. Okay, I'm gonna hit Command I on my layer mask, which is gonna invert that area on my layer mask. I know it's beautiful. You don't have to give me the award just yet for beautiful selections. Hit Command I again, and uh, there we go. We've got a, a light source. Now we're just gonna go to Filter, uh, Blur, and then down here to Gaussian Blur. And with a nice Gaussian Blur, let's go a little bit farther out. There we go we should get something that looks a little bit more natural. Now, if you want some decay on there, uh, hit G for your gradient tool, go to our foreground to transparent gradient, and then hit X to make sure your black is your black is your foreground. This is just going to drag from, and make sure you're on your li linear gradient, by the way, there are several different gradients. So dragging from this way up that way is just gonna give you, I'll show you guys. Uh, you can hold Alt or Option, just to click on your layer mask. So this is what that's gonna do. It's gonna make it less, less light there. It's gonna fade from light to dark, which is how light works, coincidentally. All right, cool. So now we've got that area and it's just kind of like shining there. So we're just kind of playing with light. Maybe make it a little bit brighter. Go in here in our, in our levels. There we go. And let's just put a little bit more yellows in there as well. Go to our red channel and pump up our reds. There we go. So that's just kind of like brightening that area up a little bit. And if you want to like grab a brush tool and paint to just kind of like add some variance in there, you can do that too. All right, that looks pretty cool. So we're basically painting light. Now I'm gonna do the same thing like right around our light as well. I'm gonna grab a curves adjustment layer. We're just gonna make this area quite a bit brighter. All right, there we go. And we're gonna pull down our blues and pull up our reds just a little bit. I have a fly on my head right now. You guys are full screen, you see that? It's nice. <laughs> Thank God summer's here in Chicago. The flies come out and decide to land on your head in the middle of Photoshop episodes. They add to it. It's nice. All right. So basically, we're going to do this in a couple different, um, a couple different passes. And, and really, anytime I'm playing with lights and, and, and you know doing this sort of thing, I really like to do them in a couple different layers. Like one layer usually won't do it. So I'll one layer, and then I'll do another layer that's a little bit brighter, closer to the light source. It usually helps when you can add on to those things like over and over and over and again. Um, so that's that's what I like to do as well. All right, so we've got a light source and that's coming in from the left. Let's just shift click these, hit command G. So we'll see the before and after with that. So not only are we lightening the image in general, uh, but we're also adding that little light source. Now we're gonna do the same thing here off to the camera right uh, because we have all this nice detail and obviously he is lit from, from that side as well. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer. This is a little bit of a different technique. It's kind of cool. And clone stamp this area from his head, the area where it's kind of like light, okay? So we've got this area from his head is now, um, <laughs> is now on its own layer. So clone stamp, just make sure when you're using your clone stamp to sample all layers. We're gonna change this from normal down here to screen, or if you don't like screen, you can change this to lighten. I just wanna get the dark areas away. I'm gonna hit Command T and we're just gonna really kind of like stretch this out. There we go, something like that. 
looks pretty good. All right, and I'm using this that's actually on his face because you know it's the right color and everything like that. All right, now we're gonna go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur again, and this is going to just create like a little bit of a light blur there. Now the thing that I really like about this is it's not just like some color we grabbed, like there's, there's variations of color within this area, so it's gonna look just like a little bit more natural. And I'm gonna hit Command T again. We could just like make this any size we want. There we go, rotate it around. That looks pretty good. Lighten or screen, either one will work. I like lighten because of the color, uh, but I think we just lower the opacity a little bit. So we've got a little like flare coming from the camera right that we just clone stamped directly from his skin, which is, um, I just think doing that stuff is fun because no one ever knows when you do it and you get to know it's like, yeah, that's really like a blurred version of his face in the corner of the image, but you wouldn't know that. So um, if you are a Photoshop dork like me, that's a lot of fun. Let's create a new layer and I'm gonna change this layer from normal down here to soft light, our blending mode. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of dodging and burning, painting with black and white. We're gonna cover our highlights with white and I'm just going to uh, paint black on our shadows. And this is just gonna give us a little bit more yeah, kind of like definition throughout the image. I'm doing this relatively uh, quickly, I would say. Uh, normally, I spend quite a bit more time dodging and burning. Um, because it really can have quite a large impact on, on what your image looks like. Um, but basically the principle with dodging and burning, and we have a ton of episodes on dodging and burning, by the way. If you guys want to learn more about dodging and burning, all you have to do is go in the search bar in the top right of flurn.com and type in dodge and burn, and you will find a ton of episodes on dodge and burn. All right, but basically the principle is to make some areas lighter and some areas darker, thus drawing attention to the lighter areas and taking attention away from the darker areas. All right, and you can really do a nice job like sculpting people's face and facial features and things like that. At, at the same time, not really like losing detail. There we go. Maybe we'll just make this area just a little bit brighter here. All right, looking good. Erase it just a little bit over there. So there we've got like a rough kind of like dodge and burn, just to give this a little bit more contrast. Okay, we're actually not that far from done. We've done quite a bit of the things that I wanted to show you guys with this episode. Um, some of the other things that we are going to do, I'm gonna do a little bit more work on color. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna grab a color balance adjustment layer. And here, mostly I like to play with the midtones. Um, shadows tend to get a little bit muddy when you use those. Um, highlights work as well, but most of the time I find playing with the midtones works. So I'm gonna pull this towards cyan and maybe towards, there we go, towards yellow a little bit. Just to kinda of like give it a little bit more of an interesting feel. There we go. And our highlights we can play with, we're gonna maybe like take these away from the green spectrum, push a little bit more red and a little bit more yellow into those. All right, so we can see the before and after with that as well. It is killing a little bit of the blues that are in our shadows. So if we wanna get back, get our blues back, I'm gonna show you a cool way to do that. Let's go to curves. And I'm gonna clip the shadows now, but I'm also gonna brighten them. So clipping our shadows is basically like, you know, anything to the left of this point that I'm dragging here from the left to the right, anything to the left of that becomes black. If you drag this up, anything, um, it basically takes your black point and makes it less dark. So it's gonna make our blacks uh, more of gray. Works on the same thing with your highlights. If you wanna drag your highlights down, it's gonna make the brightest point in your image not as bright. And from the right to the left, is going to start clipping out. Now, what I'm gonna do is something different. I'm gonna like pull this not only to the right, which is gonna clip, but I'm also gonna pull it up. And somewhere around there, you find like an interesting, let's just turn this off and on so you guys can see. Um, it will clip all the detail from your shadows. So you're gonna like lose a little bit of details in your shadows, and it's also gonna clip them so they're not as dark, which is, I think, really, really cool. And we're gonna do that, and then I'm gonna color I'm gonna put a color in our shadows as well. So those two techniques combined creates a really cool effect. So that's our first one. And here we're going to create a new layer. Well, let's just go ahead and create a solid color layer. This is the best way to do it in my opinion. Grab like a nice dark blue, something like this, okay? And change this from normal down here to lighten. There we go. And then if you wanna like um, just change your color here, just double click right on there. And then you can change your color down to something nice and dark and you can change your hue or your saturation. There we go. Maybe we'll get it saturated, but a little bit darker. 
maybe a little bit less saturated. From the left to the right is going to change your saturation. From the bottom to the top is going to change, sorry, left to the right, yeah, saturation, bottom to the top will change your luminosity. So brighter, brighter and more saturated, brighter, less saturated, dark and not saturated, dark and saturated. All right, there we go. So we're going to find a nice dark color that's also saturated. And then here I can change my hue. But I think I'm going to stick to like the blue, the blue area because I like that. All right, there we go. This is nice about the color picker because you can just you can just change your color at any point in time, and hit OK. So that's basically going to turn any part, any point in our image that's below a certain brightness. It's going to turn it into this color, and we also clipped that brightness using this curves. We can change our opacity on this just a little bit. Let's just click shift click and uh, command G so we can see here's a before and after let's just zoom in so you guys can see the details especially here in the piano where we our darks are kind of getting a little bit muddy let's just zoom in there so you can see that it's, this is a style choice by the way not something you have to do on image, any image not something that would be appropriate on every image it's a style choice in this case so we'll show you the before goes to black and the after we're clipping so you're going to lose some of this detail you can see it there you're going to lose that detail and it's going to go to blue um, but just kind of cool way to make it look like, you know, a film or something like that, um, which I, I think is really nice. All right, here at the very end, what we're going to do is a little bit of sharpening. I'll show you how to do that. Not that hard. Shift Option Command E is going to make a stamp visible layer. We're going to desaturate that, desaturate it by hitting Shift Command U. Now I'm going to change this from normal down here to overlay, and we're going to go to filter, other, and here to high pass. There we go. And I'm going to choose a nice radius that's going to allow quite a bit of sharpening, especially on his face. So there we can see there's our before and our after. And I'm going to put a black layer mask on that by holding Alt or Option, clicking on the layer mask button, and then I'm going to paint it white over his face. So we make sure his face is a little bit sharp. Nothing else is really that sharp. All right, guys, and that's it. Some really cool techniques, including clone stamping a person's face, clipping those black levels, and adding in some color into those dark. So hold Alt or Option. Click on this eyeball down below. There's the before and the after. You can see that didn't really take that long, and we've got a very cool image as a result. And again, we also brought in the other light. So I did a little bit of a rough job on that. I could have done it a little bit better. I'm sure you guys will when it's your image and you're doing it for real, I'm not trying to do a live tutorial. However, um, very cool. Before and the after, we can definitely see it's, it's stylized. The light works a little bit more. It's a little bit more interesting. So that's it. Guys, use these techniques. Go out. Take some environmental portraits. A dude sitting at a piano, like this is not, <laughs> we didn't spend thousands of dollars to get this photo. It's just like, oh, there's a dude sitting at a piano. Let's put some interesting light in there and then color correct it in Photoshop and make it really nice. So you guys can totally do this thing. This could be of your friend. This is literally a friend of ours named DJ Dola who we photographed, not a professional actor or model or anything like that. So go out there, find a friend, get them wearing some cool clothes, put them in an interesting location, light them interestingly. If you just need to use a lamp, like we, did, we actually used this lamp to light his face in this image. So you can totally do that and then color it. You'll get some great, great images out of it. I can't wait to see them. Post them in a comment down below. I'd love to see them. Thanks so much for watching, Florin guys. Enjoy it. Have an awesome weekend after tomorrow. See you soon. I'm done. It's gone. It, it's done. There's no more to see. No more Photoshop. You can continue to see me especially if you pause it right here, then you'll get me making a funny face. <laughs>